Hi guys, Marty from Astronomy East. Today we're going to show you really quick, this is a quick video, probably no more than a couple minutes, we're going to show you how to mount this, a ZWO EAF Advanced Autofocuser to a Skywatcher Esprit 120 Focuser. Now I took the, um, I took the instructions from someone that on the internet, and we'll put them in the comments, of how to put the holes in the Skywatcher focuser. This is really easy. At first I thought it was really hard to do, but I promise this took less than an hour to do and I'm going to show you the end result. And uh, it was actually worth the effort. So stay tuned. Take care. Okay guys, so here's the video of mounting an autofocuser to an Esprit 120 um, telescope focuser. So as you guys are aware, like I, I took the information from uh, somebody on the internet, and again, they're posted in the comments below. It was a great solution. I thought it was going to be much harder, and I was worried about drilling into my uh, focus, um, auto, you know, my focus knob plate. But it was actually pretty easy. Um, the instructions were to get an eight, um, an eight thirty-two uh, threads, I guess. Um, drill and or uh, drill and um, what do you call it tap tap set I did that and that's what this looks like so I drilled with my drill very slowly you can see the filings here this is all like real time um, it took me about 10 minutes really 10 minutes to set up then about 10 minutes to get the courage up to do this and then about 30 seconds to really do the tapping here and as you can see, the, the, the ZWO autofocuser will go right on here very nicely. It's hard to do with one hand, but now I'll be able to put, um, once I get this on here, it's perfectly lined up for two center holes here, including the one, including the hole here. So you're going to get three mounting holes for this guy, and it'll be very stable. And when it's all said and done, what I did before I started was I, I mounted the autofocuser all the way in, all the way in and then I used a sharpie just to make sure I had the holes perfectly where I wanted them and one thing you have to note when you do this is make sure that you go outside of this range where the um, the, the um, worm gear is here um, and again one of the reasons why I did it this way and a lot of people are kind of talking on the internet about when you put this guy on your scope um, a lot of people are talking about using these screws. These four inner screws are actually something that you don't want to tamper with. The four outer screws are the mounting screws for the focuser. And again, this is hard with one hand, but the point I'm trying to make here is that these four inner screws here are your distance adjustment screws. And they actually allow the focuser to ride above the worm gear. These uh, distance adjusting screws are no different than like a CGX mount or any other mount that you have where you have to have the worm gear has to sit above this track without being too tight. If you don't have these things raising, basically in raises and, and out lowers. If you don't have these things um, perfectly aligned so that this thing rides on the track properly, you're not going to be able to turn your focus tube and it's going to take uh it's going to sound like grinding and it's going to feel really rough so um the point i'm trying to make here is do not use the inner four screws to mount any hardware to your focuser this this is important that these things are used for distance adjusting the other four screws really just kind of mount it on the tube you don't really want to use those either although some people do use those so honestly at the end of the day the easiest thing to do is to drill some holes and be careful and then use a self-tapping um, uh, kit, and then use the proper hardware to mount to mount this. Now, I I mounted this the other day in this focuser, just using the one hole, and I got away with one night of focusing. And I got to tell you, it was pretty awesome. It worked great for the scope. Um, the only other thing I need to do now is finish. I'll show you the other video when I finish, and then. Uh, one of the things I am a little bit concerned about is this one has a self-locking. So you can't have the self-locking too tight or the autofocuser won't be able to uh, actually adjust focus. So um, in that case, I would need to adjust the shoe pressure, 
which are four screws, I think, on the other side of the tube. Um, they might even be here, um, but there are other screws to, to tighten the actual um, stiffness of the two, the shoe pressure, so that the um, the camera and the weight of the camera don't, act, you know, accidentally just fall out of the tube. Um, and I'm not sure when this thing is powered on if it actually provides enough back pressure for the uh, for the camera. You guys may know more than me. This is my first time doing this, but I wanted to just give you guys the confidence. If anybody's looking for how to do the Skywatcher 100, 120, 150 with the ZWO, which is relatively new, um, and it's relatively expensive with the stock plate, this is the way to go. So take care. Hope you enjoyed the video. Leave some comments below. I'll try to get back to you guys when I can. So this is the final assembly of the ZWO EAF auto advanced focuser, auto focuser and uh, attached here. I don't have the, um, I don't have the grommet screw fully attached here yet, but you can just see how smooth now the uh, focuser is because I used that, those distance adjusting screws to raise them off the worm gear a little bit. I also put some, a little bit of grease, a dab of lithium, white lithium grease in there. And uh, this thing is silky smooth now. So that's gonna be nice for the, uh, for the uh, autofocusing test run. I used it the other night, it looked pretty good, but now it's stable. This guy isn't going anywhere. Um, the only thing I did notice is that the attachment, sometimes it rubs up against here. So hopefully when it's fully extended, uh, it won't rub too much against the scope. If it does, then I'll have to just play with that a little bit. But for all practical, pur practical purposes, it's only moving uh, microns, 50, 100 microns or so, at, you know, when it's in operation. So it's it shouldn't be too much stress on the, uh, on the motor controller or the knobs itself. So I'm pretty happy with this. Um, I know a lot of people... Are not comfortable yet with the ZWO autofocuser but so far this is amazing um, that it was so easy to put these on here it was just pretty pretty easy to do and again the uh, the guy that told me about this um, went out and bought this for I think uh, seven or eight bucks or five or six bucks at his hardware along with the um, the hand the hand tool when you do this um, when you do the um, tap set make sure you just do it by hand go really slow and obviously when you drill uh, make sure you go really slow so enjoy enjoy and clear skies everybody I'll see you next time